Hi there everyone. I'm behind the camera this time round. Once again, pretty much like that Robin Hood unboxing, which I thought did uh, rather well actually. <laughs> yeah, again, this is completely unscripted. So again, I do apologize if I keep repeating certain words. I know that's annoying. I'll try not to do that. Anyway, I am somewhat of a fan of the company Toei. <laughs> Um, yeah, I can't explain it. I think, I think it's because it's the only one of like the major Japanese studios to do things right or do things that you would expect them to do. It's weird. It really is. Like, um, they're the only ones that invest in both animation and live action. And none of the other studios do that. Um, well, Toho, I think, did uh, fairly recently. But um, the other ones, the big two, Shochiku and um, Kadokawa Pictures, nope, none of them were doing that. I mean, yeah, they've had um, distribution uh, licenses for certain studios, uh, Toho uh, for TMS, and they also distributed the films for Doraemon and um, oh, what was it? Oh, and the Pokemon movies, that was the other one. Um, and Shochiku often distributes films by Sunrise, or at least they did. Not sure, they might still do, but um, I'm not sure nowadays because obviously the um, the studio is practically Bandai Namco Studios um, uh, fairly recently. So yeah, Bandai Namco Studios, they've recently changed their name. So yeah, I don't know, who knows? It's... <laughs> um, you yeah, haven't really been keeping track on that. But with Toei, you know where you are because Toei makes their own live action stuff. They make their own animation stuff. They have their own home entertainment division. Everything is done in-house by them. In fact, you could call them perhaps the most Japanese of them all because they like to do everything in-house. <laughs> um, I didn't mean to do some kind of a xenophobic joke towards Japan I do apologize shut up no um but no, I'm just saying that it's everything is done in-house they um you know they kind of know what they're doing and they and the main company is just inside a small set of offices which downstairs happens to be one of their movie playhouses or one of their own cinemas so yeah they must be you know really, really comfortable with where they are if they have a tiny box of an office to work in Oh dear. Oh no, it's, it's it's not that small. I'm exaggerating a bit, but it's it's just um uh yeah, just a regular sized building. You think it'd be bigger. Toho's actually got like a bigger, brighter looking headquarters, but then mind you, they do uh massive um not massive, but very lengthy films. So yeah. Anyway, the main point of this is that Toei used to, actually they kind of still do, I think it was revived slightly recently, but I think it was just animation. But anyway, um, for years, during the school holidays in Japan, for at least three times a year, I think ever since, I think it was around 1968, it could have been sooner, but I uh, um, don't know if they did any before 1968, so yeah, not quite sure, but anyway. They did a thing called the Toei Manga Matsuri, which um, translates to the Toei Comic Festival. Um, which, yeah, they had at least three of them take place during the same year, often during the Japanese school holidays. One in the spring during Golden Week, which um, is a whole slew of holidays all in one go. Um, Pokemon actually referenced at least two of those days with Princess Day and the Children's Day, which followed. Um, yeah, in the episodes Princess vs. Princess and the Perfect Hero back in uh, the very first season. So yeah, those were based on actual Japanese holidays, which take place during Golden Week. Um, there's the summer one, which takes place obviously during the summer break. I don't know how long it actually is. I think it's a lot shorter than... Um, I think even like the UK one has um, has it gone on for six weeks, so which is about a month and a half, which is half that of um, how um, it's done over in North America. Of course, North America they have three months off, at least in the United States they have three months off. But um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure how long that uh, the holiday is. But during the summer period, they often would have one as well. Uh, Mangamatsui. And then, of course, they would have one for the Christmas Gregorian New Year period at the end of December. So, yeah, they would have it like a winter 
So she said, one in the spring, one in the summer, one in the winter. Autumn. Now, autumn doesn't get one. Everyone's busy in the autumn. So there you go. <laughs> September, October, November. Yeah, it's the, um, you know, the, oh, no, the dreaded back to school part. <laughs> no, no it's, it, no, it's fine. But yeah, um, those are the periods of the year when uh, Toei would often have their manga matsuris play out. Um, so I think the heyday, the golden age, as it were, were definitely the 1970s and the 1980s when um, Toei were really developing big hits on television. And they, of course, made sure to... It's kind of a promotional showcase, as it were. <laughs> it's a clever promotional showcase done for the kids. Um, but basically... To, um, but for the other companies, Toei are basically... They didn't actually do it, but it's like them saying, hey, look at this other studios. We produce our own live-action TV shows and our own cartoons, anime, whatever. And we're putting them all together in this film festival for kids to watch. So, ha, 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 ha. Yes, we, we've done all this. <laughs> uh, it's just amazing, really. It just is that um, they were able to do that. But, yeah, they <laughs> they were. And... Because they can. They own everything that they produced. Well, there was one major exception I can think of. During one of the uh, Manga Matsuris from 1980, and I don't know how they managed to do this, but apparently so, they got the right to do a Japanese dub of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. That's Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Yes, they actually got the rights to that film and had inserted it into one of their manga matsuis in 1980. So I doubt, well, at least not that one, unless they've really got special permission from Disney Japan and they'll have to pay them royalties or whatever. But I doubt that particular one is going to make it onto DVD and Blu-ray anytime soon. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay, but this is coming to my point now. Yeah, some of them had been released on DVD and Blu-ray. Yeah, some of them had been uh, released on DVD and Blu-ray. I'm just making sure the camera is... Yeah, it's fine where it is. Yeah. Yeah, some have been released. Um, not everything. Um, not all the festivals, obviously. They just did a few select ones and produced them onto um, Blu-ray and DVD. Well, actually, no, just DVD. I just I just remember... I'm, I'm just reminded myself now they haven't gone on to Blu-rays just yet. They might. They might probably manage to put all of the three manga matsuis they've done a year onto a single blu-ray which i think they can do it, it, it it's about three roughly about two to three hours per festival so that's yeah nine hours i think you can fit nine hours onto a single blu-ray with no um no dipping quality or whatever i'm pretty sure because obviously blu-ray is meant to store a lot more data than a dvd um i mean DVD, uh, dvds can hold up to a certain amount but uh, blu-rays tend to go about triple um yeah about dvd's uh, data size it's about triple that so yeah i apologize not 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 blu-ray just yet but they did release a few on dvd including this one this of course is just making sure ignore my hair if you okay okay good <laughs> it's not catching it or anything just strain it out there we go yes this is the summer 1984 toy manga matsuri or as it says hung on the back, um, fu see, the, fuko the Fukoku Toei Manga Matsuri 1984 Summer, as it says on the um, back there. Usually the top part is something like exciting, stupendous, or I I'm assuming that's what um, that kind of was trying to um, get, you know, something to get the kids' attention. Right, this is like the excellent Toei Manga Matsuri, and it takes place, you know, in this year and during this period. So, yeah, so this was the one that uh, came out in the summer of 1984. And, yeah, this is what I mean by then having a showcase of some of their animated projects and some of their live-action tokusatsu products. And, of course, this is by Toei Video, sale only. Yeah, don't worry, this is sold. It's not It's not going to be used for rent or anything like that, especially since, you know, very few people here in the UK will know what's going on. Including myself for the most part, but I'm fine with um, actually watching stuff in raw Japanese. <laughs> actually, I just watched some stuff from another manga matsui last night, so it's all good. Trust me, it's all good. I'm just, just amazed by this company. I mean... Some of the stuff that, you know, they, I mean, you don't have to like everything that they uh, put out, but 
the actual festival itself, this is just like, it's a no brainer. <laughs> it really is. It's like, hey, let's entertain the kids by like, making them go to one of our playhouses for three hours to watch all of this. <laughs> and there you are. Or they might have, um, or they might have had special, um, like, uh, they probably have also had special tickets for maybe for kids who don't sit down too long. Like, they may want it to watch something specific. Maybe they might sell tickets to a specific, like, sub part of the festival if they really wanted to. Or they can go back and um, buy tickets for each individual, uh, yeah, each individual film. Or they might have a ticket to watch the entire festival outright. A bit like, um, like at fun fairs where you have, uh, or, or carnivals, whatever you want to call them, where you can get, like, um, uh, you can like pay for going on to certain rides, or you can get like a day pass, which allow you to go on to all of the rides at one time. I think they they may have done something like that. Otherwise, this would just be a full package, um, especially since they they do give stuff out. So there you are. So yeah, we have. Um, so yeah, what do we have included here? We have the Kodocha wine right here, which I believe is based on a shoujo manga that I know absolutely sod all about. <laughs> So yeah, so we've got um, the Kodocha wine. We have Kiniki Man. Yeah, there's a been a, there's a, there's quite a lot of Kiniki Man films um, that Toei made during the 1980s, and of course this is um, I think this may have been like their second one. I think the first one came out in '83. I think it's like the yeah the major second one they had, and oh boy. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> Kiniki Man. Is well, let's just say he's a bit problematic when it comes to being translated. Well, at least to one certain language. I'll get to that. And we also have Chodenshi Bioman, the very show that Time Saban had seen in um, uh, when he went over to Japan once and was quite impressed by it. And of course, inspired him initially to do Power Rangers. And speaking of Heim Saban, their space show of Shida, who. Um, many of you may recognise as being Ryan Steele from season two of VR Troopers. Hi, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there he is in his bike with his little video gun about to shoot the poor bio men who are just posing for some reason. <laughs> uh, towering above big, uh, big muscly men who is also above them a, a, a girl and a boy who looks like he's looking very awkward in shot because he probably fancies her but doesn't, I don't know, because again I don't know much about the Kodansha wine, so there you go <laughs> okay, shut up <laughs> there we are. And, and of course that's meant, and um, I don't know if he's meant, yeah, it's meant to be like Kiniki Man's little sidekick thing up there on the star again, don't know that much about Kiniki Man apart from one particular character who's rather infamous, which is why he won't be going to a particular country anytime soon, but there you are. This, of course, is the spine, and you're wondering, um, yes, this has actually got a particular cover on it, and I'll explain why in a, in a second. Of course, we've got all that, and, oh, look, Toya are so humble, their logo is right at the bottom of this DVD. <laughs> Very humbled, and this is the back, or... Rather, it isn't the back. This with the Bioman on it. This is act because this is a first run print release. This is a reproduction pamphlet of, uh, well, the pamphlet that was given out to kids during the actual Toy Manga Matsui. So, yeah, they actually did reproductions of these um, nifty little pamphlets. The later re releases, though, they don't contain um, these pamphlets. It's only on these first, uh, first print releases. That's why the first print releases tend to be a little bit, uh, a little bit more expensive than the not um, first print releases. Yeah, it's, it, and it's a little confusing, but yeah. So they did a first print release with little bits of extras, a bit more expensive because they printed a bit more. And um, afterwards, they uh, would do a price down reissue, which does not have the book pamphlet, so it's cheaper, but you get a little, uh, you get a lot less bells and whistles. Oh yeah, and that's another thing. Um, I think I did mention it is that uh, when uh, Toei aired these, oh, aired these. Sorry, uh, when these were um, aired, they're not aired. They're not on TV. They're on their um, you know, in the movie theaters, cinemas, whatever you call them. Yeah, um, Toei owns their own um set of uh cinemas and all that, and that is of course where the kids often go to to um see all these films. I'm I'm assuming yeah, they've got them all over the place, all over Japan. Um, 
even though their main offices are in Tokyo, for example, of course, there's um, there's the well-known Toei Kyoto Park, which is often used sometimes for filming Japanese period dramas, like their famous Jidai Geki um, samurai dramas. Um, yeah, they actually did a collection on um, DVD and I think probably re-released on Blu-ray, I guess, at some point, or in, done each film individually. But yes, um, the Jidai Geki I'm talking about, not this. Uh, so yeah, so they did that. Um... So yeah, they must. Uh, so yeah, they've got uh, playhouses, um, like, like, like they like to call them, all over Japan, and they would have the manga matsuis play out in each of those. Um, well, each of those playhouses. So yeah, <laughs> very. There you go. And like I said, there was. Um, of course, there's a toy cinema right down um, at the ground floor of their. Um, sorry, uh, their offices in Japan. So again, I'm doing this all unscripted. I'm. Uh, I'm trying to think of my next move now. Yeah, or trying to uh, trying to remember what to say and also think about what my next move is at the same time. So yes, I am going to open this so that we can. Um, oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not tearing it open. I'm just. Is that may may sound like I'm trying to keep the adhesive um, as is so that we can open up this. There we obviously the stickers on the back. So we get the pamphlet, which we'll take a look at in a sec. And this is the actual backing for the, uh, sorry, this is the actual backing for the DVD. Oh dear, I'm so sorry if my camera is, <clears throat> I'm hoping you'll be able to see, yeah, hopefully you'll be able to see all of it. So yeah, this is the actual backing for the DVD. Of course, we've got Bioman, The Kadansha Wine, um, Metolda, and Kiniki Man there at the bottom. Not, I don't think it actually comes out in that particular order, I think. <laughs> I can't remember now, um. Uh, I, yeah, can't actually remember now which it is the actual orders. Um, not particular, uh, not like, or oh, it may have been like this. Uh, yeah, I think it actually, um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember now. I only played the disc once, um, just to see if everything worked. And of course it is. This is a, a region two DVD. So of course it will play on, um, UK, European, uh, DVD players. Yeah. It's just the only major thing, of course, is the picture will be in NTSC as opposed to uh, PAL, which is a lot of um, countries here in Europe use. But um, that's really so much with modern day televisions. Yeah, you can actually see their region to NTSC because that's the um, thing for Japan. It's weird that Japan had the same DVD picture format as us and not like gone with region one. But then, I don't know, maybe that may have complicated things or something. I don't know. So, yeah, this is... Um, so that's the back end, of course. The front is the front, we just saw that. And we just saw the spine, of course, this is the back. And now, oh, oh, you stupid hand. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, I've not, didn't mean to knock the camera there. There we go. So we've just opened, I've opened it up. So now you can see the disc and you get another pamphlet. <laughs> or another um, little booklet thing. And uh, the good thing about this is not only do you get everything in the, um, Prisoner Cell Block H font. <laughs> I just realised this is the same font they use for the logo for Prisoner Cell Block H. <laughs> oh dear. Oh great. Oh um. Oh, I'll get um. I don't know. Maybe Toei were trying to sell Australia some illegal anime and uh, tokusatsu or whatever, and they were sent to Wentworth and had to spend some time in, <laughs> in solitary confinement for twenty four hours. I don't know. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, yeah. Uh, so you can see, nice shiny disc. Yeah, very nice shiny disc. Well, at least the um, the film strip portion is. We have everything um, seen there, all in a nice shiny effect there. And of course, you get on the left all the logos for the uh, films, which are part of the manga matsuri. And inside here, we have the booklet. Not the official booklet. We'll take a look at that as well. But this is just the booklet that they print with the um, actual um, release of the DVD. You get these even with the price down reissue. So they're not, you're not going to go in totally blind <laughs> or you don't get um, just a disc. You do get something. And this is just the stereotypical um, look after your discs to make them play longer sort of thing. <laughs> that um, Yeah, sometimes uh, DVD companies, like for kids, they often um, will tell you, you know, like don't put your hand on the shiny side because it will... Scr um, scratch it up don't draw or 
get anything wet on it and uh, well, <laughs> stuff like that. And yeah, just basically don't get the disc dirty and it will continue playing, essentially. Uh, yeah, so yeah, and actually, they don't actually have the logo on there. I thought Toy would put their logo um, somewhere on there, but no, they do have the website, but not their logo. And I'll put the disc to one side for a moment and we will now take a look at the Toei Manga Matsuri 1984 summer uh, booklet from the this is the DVD booklet not the actual booklet oh, that um, came with it we'll look at the pamphlet in a second I'm just I'll just have to plop it there. <coughs> sorry I just got to plop it there just beside me um, just while we look at this so yes once again we got the logos for each of the uh, films of course we got <laughs> we've got all the characters all covering up the on the page then of course it's just gonna you're gonna keep seeing the same um same characters over and over again because it's just one of them things yeah you sometimes get free gifts like free posters um other little freebies as well as the pamphlet you're given um and this also shows you a lot of like promotional material and all that of course it's see, see kaniki man's movie he's got his own poster so he was like, why didn't any of the others get their own posters? I've got no idea. <laughs> uh, um, no, I think they probably did. Or so Sometimes there's like a, a, a main attraction or semi-main attraction. And then there's... Um, uh, and then the other films tend to run a little bit... Um, not, not under time, but not as long as the others. Sometimes that can happen. But, um, yeah... It, it, it depends because I said they tend to mix and match a lot of stuff. Sometimes even uh, re um, re show certain films, perhaps in the same year or maybe the following year. Yeah, just a story Magamatsuri underneath, <laughs> upside down. So yeah, some of this is upside down. Some of it is written um, up like that. Actually, I just realised the booklet is printed in the Western way. I just realised that. Yeah, this is a Western printed. Or um, well, the style of it is in the Western print because it should have been. Um, I thought it'd be like a manga where um, you just start from here and then you just turn the pages. Da, 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 and then this would have been the back. Uh, well, I know this would have been the front rather. <laughs> See, it's all confusing. They all confu toy toy is confusing me. <laughs> anyway, these are the first couple of pages. Yeah, this is one where we. They get, uh, obviously, they get into the synopsis, a few pictures into each um, picture as to what's going on. Bioman, Kodot, is it the, yeah, um, oh, the Kabocha wine. I am so sorry. I have been saying it wrong this whole time. I am so sorry. The Kabocha wine, not Kodocha, Kabocha. I, if I said something rude in Japanese by accident, I do apologize. Sorry, the Kabocha wine. <laughs> like I said, I know very little. It's very likely a shoujo manga that Toei did um, the animation for. See, they don't, they don't just do action stuff like uh, Kiniki Man <laughs> or Dragon Ball or Saint Seiya or uh, One Piece or anything like that. You know, um, well, they do that, but they do so much more. They're a very versatile studio. That is why I freaking love them. They just, they do anything. <laughs> And of course, we've got Tim um, Shida. Oh, poor Annie. <laughs> poor Annie inside the glass uh, casing in the film. Yes, I had seen it. <laughs> and I do know who she is. <laughs> oh, dear me. Um, oh, yeah, the um, oh, the bad guys. Um, Neo Empire gear in Bioman. I love their salute for some reason. They um, they do this thing with their arms and go, For the man! Because <laughs> the um, main villain is called Doctor Man. Yeah, very original. But yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> Oh boy, that's um. I just love this salute. I just find it funny. They, I don't think it's supposed to be like um a Nazi thing. No, no, they don't do that. No, oh no, no. For um, yeah, it just reminded me about the obvious elephant in the room with Kaniki Man there. But uh, yeah, it, but yeah, they weren't doing. Oh, sorry, they weren't doing that sort of fit. Uh, well, they were doing that, but they weren't doing like a full on um salute like um the Nazis do. Thankfully, uh, but yeah. <clears throat> and we've got some more pictures here for um oh they have to oh they have to their own poster well bioman has their own poster so yeah i don't know what happened there with um with shido and maybe in the kodansha wine kabocha wine i'm so sorry again um yeah sorry kabocha wine I'll, tr I'll try to remember that but no um I'm completely losing track here. I'm so sorry, but yeah, but still, look at the posters. 
If, um, let's look at them because these are um, all several different ones. I think some of these are also used for promotional purposes. Well, or maybe this was the oh no, these were the promotion. Um, like sometimes you get like little magazine ads or newspaper articles, and it, these this is what they are here on the back. This is the posters, and other I think little extra little bits you may have gotten. Like you may have gone, uh, so you may have also gotten a free poster and also a few extra bits. But no, anyway, I want to focus now. I know I, I now know what I want to talk about. Oh, him. Him. Yeah, him. He is the reason why Kinyiki Man is quite problematic, at least in Germany, because he is a Nazi. Yeah, I don't know if he's a robot or if he's an actual person. I think he's a robot because, you know, it's Japan. Come on, he has to be a robot. But still, he is a Nazi. But he's supposed to be a good guy Nazi. So, yeah, a good guy Nazi. <laughs> uh, uh, um, I think that was the idea from uh, the manga car who created him, but still, yeah, 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 Kiniki Man is just pro problematic. I'm going to admit not the biggest Kiniki Man fan in the world. I'm definitely, I definitely bought this for the Tokusatsu's. That's for sure, because that's my, um, that, that's more of my area, my area of expertise. Some of the toy cartoons I know, but um, Kiniki Man is one of them. Which um, it's, <clears throat> uh, it looks like you know it's supposed to be um, you know action oriented. It does have action, obviously, because it's all about wrestlers. But it's also very slapsticky and full of Japanese comedy in places. So yeah, it's it's definitely an acquired taste. So that's the um, pamphlet, uh, so the booklet that you get with the DVD itself. Is that sealed? Hopefully it is. So now let's move on to the reproduction of the pamphlet you get with the in the festival itself. Just making sure it's all in, um, all in shot here. So yes, yeah, so again, Bioman, Shida, the Kodocha wine. Yeah, you got it right that time. And uh, Kiniki Man. Each one of these films, I think, had a subtitle? Excuse me. Or um, something um, in that regard. They, it, of course, they made uh, quite a few of these. They made so many of. And um, sometimes it would give them like an additional subtitle to uh, let you know which films which. Like Shida here, this is actually the first of two films um, that they made. The second one came out in the December manga Matsui. So there you are. Bioman only had the one film. But other Super Sentai series had uh, two films on occasion, sometimes. Um, the Kodocha Wine, I think. Kodocha Wine! I did it again! Uh, sorry. I think this was just a one-off from an enemy that was being, produ uh, being in production for the time. And as I said, this was, I think, the second Kiniki Man film. So there you are. We'll just take a look at the... This is the back. You've got that one that was used for the poster again. And there's Heroic Nazi again. Um, so yeah, there's... Uh, yeah, they're kind of... <laughs> Loads of gimmicky stereotypes with the Kaniki Man wrestlers there. So, yeah, again, this is, this is what I mean. It's all... Um, <laughs> I just explained what uh, the whole thing with uh, Kaniki Man. So there we are. But still, the booklet is quite nice. Actually, we're, starting with, we're starting off with Shida, which um, I haven't opened this in a while. Completely um, I forgot which pieces were... Uh, uh, what, what's going on? There's Vavios. <laughs> yeah, there's... Um, the large, uh, large spaceship that can become a huge laser gun and can transform into a robot because it's a metal hero. Of course, their spaceship will become a robot. <laughs> and they seem fighting. I think the mon uh, the monster of the movie there is called Omega, who um, wants to fight Shida because his ancestors fought against the other two space sheriffs and lost, and so he wants to fight him in order to finally, you know, gain his revenge or gain respect and whatnot. So, yeah, <laughs> it's one of those. Um, yes, uh, Shida here, of course, is the third of the Space Sheriff trilogy after Space Sheriff Gavan and Space Sheriff Shivan in 1982 and 83, respectively. I don't think either of them had films. Or they may have... No, I think this is the first uh, Metal Heroes uh, series to actually have films. So, yeah, there you are. <clears throat> oh, that's actually a nice 3D image of um, Fuma's base there. Um, yeah, the um, Fushigi Empire Fuma, whatever um, they're called, or um, Grimlord's Dark Fortress from VR Trooper Season 2, if you prefer. <laughs> oh, but yeah, because this, again, this was used for, um, or footage of this was used for um, VR Trooper Season 2. I don't think they actually used the, f uh, the films, though, they just used the TV episodes. But yeah, there you are. Now we go straight to Bio Man. There's the Bio Robo fighting against the. Um, Mecha 
I can't remember what um, Dr. Man calls his uh, mecha that they fight um, each and every episode, but um, not, not, I was going to say Mecha Gaijin, but no, Gaijin means foreigner, so that does, it's, that's not right. <laughs> mecha something or other, but yeah, um, that, that Mecha that beast person, whatever. <laughs> so there's the Bio Dragon unleashing the two Bio Jets, which of course combine to form Bio Robo there. Now I do remember. And there we have um, uh, Mason, I think he was named, yeah, Mason Monster and Farah were the three um, main generals. Yeah, and. Um, that's one of the five beastnoids. Yeah, this is a it, this is interesting. Is that Bioman instead of had, actually having a, a traditional monster of the day, they just have like a mech of the uh, or a mech of the day, as it were, to fight. And you'd have like these five beastnoids um, that they often fight continuously. So yeah, that's um, pretty interesting stuff. On oh, here we have the what are the foot soldiers called. Um, oh, I can't remember who the um, the, the foot soldiers are called. Um, Oh, it's going to annoy me now, but I can't, I'm sorry, but I can't remember. We got the Bioman in action, including Yellow 4 with her arrow. Yes, Yellow 4. Yeah, the, um, not this version of Yellow 4, but the first version of Yellow 4 died in battle and still remains to this day the only Sentai to have a female uh, Senshi, as it were, die in battle. Yes, that is true. Uh, <laughs> um, all because the actress, um, she either left the show, ran off with one of the producers, or the fir um, yeah, the acting firm that she uh, was working for went bankrupt. And so for legal reasons, she couldn't be on camera and do her own stunts because otherwise, like if she got injured, then Toy would get themselves into a huge amount of trouble because all the actors who do their own stunts and all that are properly insured. So uh, there you go. I like to think it's more the latter than the former, but apparently, according to some people, the former apparently is quite commonplace to happen in Japan. So, hmm. there you are. Oh, we've got a third page. Oh, see, there's, there's Dr. Man. There he is. See, I'm not lying. There he is. And they all do that for the man salute. <laughs> um, the Beastnoids, I think they were called, but uh, the uh, five monsters. But you got um. Uh, no, Farrakat, I can see. Uh, Farrakat's meant to be like Farrah's own personal bodyguard. Um, yeah, and just had another female um, enemy to the cast there. She's not She's not there, but the rest of them are um, of the Neo Empire gear. And there's the Bioman, um, including... Um, is it June, I think, the replacement member of uh, Yellow Four is called? Or was that um, the one that died? I can't remember. I can't remember now. But I do know that's Peebo, the robot that brought the bio-robot to Earth and um, sought out anybody who was exposed by bio-particles so they become the bio-man to fight um, the new Empire gear. So, there you go. And now you have the, uh, the Kabocha wine. Yes, I quite right that time. Which, like I said, I know very, very little, very zero about. So please don't ask me about any of these characters. Uh, just... Um, but anyway, but at least we can see the nice, glossy, high-quality images of... Oh! <laughs> this is their only page! <laughs> or pages, rather. Oh, I mean, I, I now I think they're the shortest movie of this as well, but come on! That's... Oh, now I feel bad now for the kabocha wine. <laughs> this is... Oh, well, yeah, seriously, if you turn the page, it goes straight to Kiniki Man. <laughs> Gonna do, like, his famous Kiniki Buster on some... Poor Schmo. It's just <laughs> well, not really. He's the enemy. So there you go. I think it's um, uh, like um, like this is like I think and the subtitle of Kaniki Man and the several big Supermen, something like that. But anyway, oh uh, well, <laughs> there you go. There, there's heroic Nazi. He's supposed to be an American cowboy. He's from China, so yeah, that's another problematic thing there. I think he's meant to be. I guess a sumo, and don't know about the other two. I think it's a, a knight and a football player. I guess, um, yeah. And I said very, know very little about Kaniki Man, and probably very unlikely I'm going to learn anything anytime soon. Let's just put it that. But let's just look at the images and just say, yeah, they're doing some wrestler stuff. That's got to hurt poor Kaniki Man because uh, he's going to get strangled. But mind you, he's, he's made of muscle, so yeah, there we go. It'll be fun. They'll be. They'll all be fine. <laughs> Apart from the. These are the Evilton's right here. So uh, yeah, these are the ones they have to beat up. 
Oh boy, Kiniki man. Hmm. Or, uh, yeah, um, one other thing I do know is that uh, this actually um, inspired the Bandai Toyline Muscle. Minions are unusually small creatures lurking everywhere. These are basically um, miniature versions of these wrestlers that they um, that they give out. And yeah, uh, yeah, and also small versions of miniature wrestlers that they fight or other lots of unusually small creatures. Hence the part of the name. So uh, yeah, there you go. And that was the reproduction booklet <laughs> that you get from. Um, uh, so yeah, imagine like um, kid. I mean, hopefully some kids have kept on to like the the original prints because they must have. Pro they might be probably worth some money to collectors. You know, like worth loads and loads and loads of yen. Well, not 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 overly like too much, but um, I was going to say thousands, but a thousand yen is pretty much like one pound is here in the UK or one dollar is uh, in America. So something <laughs> not i don't want to say millions uh, my uh, re, uh the original pamphlets may not be worth millions but uh hey it's something but yeah i'm also quite proud uh, quite happy at the fact they gave this little baggie to keep um the pamphlet in because obviously it's a bit big i mean it kind of fits the dvd case but uh for the best um uh, for the best results, just keep it separate. Once again, let's just look at the backing. Toei's logo everywhere, as it should, because they're awesome. <laughs> so there you are. Um, I'll give a close shot after I've just put everything back off screen here. So if you hear rustling, that's what it is. <laughs> and oops. Right, there goes the DVD. Now the pamphlet. <clears throat> I'm talking so you can still hear me. I haven't left you. There we are. And close the lid. So there we are. Everything's all back to the way it was. So there we are. That is the Toei Manga Matsuri from summer 1984. Hopefully you've enjoyed my little... Um, it's not really an unboxing. It's just a basic, basically just a look at um, this whole thing here. But I hope you've enjoyed it. And I will... Catch you guys again soon. Take care. Bye.